Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to EdTech Classroom. I am super excited because over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be taking a bunch of different micro-credential courses online. So for those of you that aren't familiar with micro-credentials, basically they're really popular in the EdTech community and becoming increasingly popular with educators across the world. But there are these mini courses that you can take where at the end you get some sort of certification or recognition that you've mastered some new skill. Uh, so what I think is really great about these is that there's something that you can put on your resume, there's something that uh, you can put in a portfolio, and they just are great for your own professional development and your own professional learning as a teacher. Um, so I'm going to be taking the Google Certified Educator Level 1 training, and hopefully at the end of this video I'll get my certification if I pass the exam. Okay, hey everybody. So I just typed in Google Certified Educator into Google and this link right here at the very top says Certified Educator Level 1 Teacher Center. So I'm going to click on it. I guess I will just dive right in by starting off with the training. So it says, welcome to Fundamentals Training. By reading, watching videos, and doing activities, you'll learn how to integrate Google in your classroom. You can start and stop lessons at any time. We'll track your progress through the course. At the end of this course, you'll be ready to take the exam to become a Google Certified Educator Level 1. Okay, clicking on Unit 1 here. Okay, cool. So I'm going to work through this, and then I will come back to you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I just finished unit two, and I'm gonna be honest, it took me way less time than it said it was going to under the estimated time. Uh, it said it was gonna take 50 minutes, and it did not take me even close to 50 minutes. Now, I do think that this is probably because I am pretty proficient with Google Drive in general. Uh, I, I use Google Drive pretty much every single day. And in general, I'm pretty comfortable with technology. Uh, so I think that even though it took me less time, that might not necessarily be the case for everyone. Um, everybody learns at a different pace. Uh, and I skipped through some of the sections that I felt like I didn't really need to cover. About to dive into the second section of the fundamentals training. It's called Increase Efficiency and Save Time. So, unit number three have a mostly paperless classroom. It says this one's gonna take 45 minutes. Uh, I'll let you know how long it actually takes me. So I just finished unit three. Uh, it probably took me about 20 minutes, which is less than what was indicated under the suggested time. But I will say that this is definitely taking me a lot more time than I originally anticipated. Uh, it feels like I've been working on this for a really long time now and I'm only done with the first three units. So I will say that this is certainly a time consuming experience so far. <laughs> It's way later in the day now. I have finished up with Unit 8. I just finished the Unit 8 review. In total, I'd say Units 4 through 8 probably took me about two and a half to three hours total. So that's definitely less time than it said was uh, expected. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. It didn't take me as long as I anticipated, but I will say that two and a half to three hours is definitely a long chunk of time to be learning about Google Drive. I learned specifically some things in Unit 7 and Unit 8 about um, Google Sheets and Google Classroom specifically. Um, I'm a huge fan of Google Classroom as a tool, but I've never had any formal training with it. It's just been something that um, I've picked up and learned on my own. And then in Unit 8, I learned a little bit more about Google Sheets, which is something that I don't use too much as a teacher. Um, uh, I liked getting to learn more about Google Sheets' um, capabilities as an educator. So now, 
day three of me doing the Google Certified Educator Level 1 training. Tomorrow I'm going to be taking the exam, I think. So today I'm going to be finishing up with units 9 through 13. So unit 9, which I'll start off with, is teach students online skills. Unit 10 is build interactive lessons. Unit 11 is captivate your class with video. Unit 12, facilitate group work. And unit 13, promote digital citizenship and online and positive online behavior. all of the training for the Google Certified Educator Level 1 exam. Uh, I actually liked today's activities the most by far. I found it to be really interesting. What really excites me about this training is that it really focuses on ways that we can use technology to empower teachers. Uh, I really liked that it didn't just focus on tech for the sake of tech, but instead uh, really sort of prioritizes learning outcomes and learning goals, and then selecting digital tools that make the most sense to achieve those learning goals. I actually learned more today than other days. I'm just looking back at my notes here. Um, first, I, like I said, I feel like I'm a tech expert. I feel like I'm really comfortable using all of the Google Suite, but I found out about some tools today that I didn't know existed. So for example, I had no idea that Google had a science journal. So this is something that I, as a STEM teacher, I definitely want to incorporate in my teaching next year. Uh, so that's something I'm really excited about. I also learned about the Your Plan, Your Planet. I didn't know that Google had anything related to sustainability, so that's something that I'm interested in exploring next school year. Um, there was also a section about YouTube. I didn't learn too much about that. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of YouTube and feel pretty comfortable using it. The last session was about digital citizenship. Um, I didn't learn too much from that, but I think it's just an important reminder that digital citizenship is just so important for us to be embedding in our curriculum. Uh, I think now more than ever, kids really need digital citizenship curriculum. Uh, so I'm happy to hear that that's something that Google is prioritizing as well. Okay, so that is my review for the day. I think tomorrow I'm probably going to take the exam. Uh, I feel pretty prepared for it. Uh, I also am going to review Google Keep and Google Tasks because those are two tools that I don't use too regularly, uh, so I want to make sure that I have a firm understanding of those before I take the exam. It is test day. I'm going to be taking the Google Certified Educator Level 1 exam today. I just walked and got some coffee. I had a little bit of breakfast, and I'm feeling prepared to take the exam. Uh, so something that's important to keep in mind is that when you go to register for the exam, they don't actually send you the link right away. So it says it can take up to um, I think it said 24 hours or 48 hours or something like that. So make sure that you register before you're planning on taking the exam. So don't register right on the spot, otherwise you won't get to take it. So luckily, I registered last night, uh, so I'm able to take it this morning. Um, finished the exam. It took me two hours. Um, I am pretty exhausted after staring at my screen for so long. Um, so I, there were two different sections. There was a like multiple choice style question um, section, but this section, it wasn't just multiple choice questions. There was also some like drag and drop, select all that apply, questions like that. Uh, and then there was a, another section that were scenario, scenario type questions. So I actually kind of enjoyed the scenario questions, if I'm being honest. Um, it was pretty neat that in the test, they actually have you, um, you know, navigate throughout Google Drive. So using um, or the Google Suite in general. So it was kind of neat to uh, get to actually practice some things that I would be doing um, as a teacher using the Google Education uh, platforms. Uh, so that was pretty neat. Um, let me see, I took some, I took some notes right when I finished the test. Um, 
So yeah, there were 20 multiple choice style questions. Uh, and then there were 12, 11 application scenarios on my test and total of 180 minutes. Um, so it went over pretty much primarily just the core G Suite products, um, the ones that I use regularly and a couple of the other ones that I wasn't quite as familiar with, but for the most part, it was a heavy focus on the ones that I use regularly. Um, so, you know, that's everything from Gmail and Drive, uh, Google Meet, Chrome, Classroom, etc. cetera. Uh, stuff that you guys probably already expect is gonna be on the exam. Um, I had to sign an NDA, so I can't really share too many details um, besides what uh, is sort of public knowledge about the exam. So I, I ended the exam with an hour left, which I kind of was like, should I spend more time checking my work? But I went through and I checked everything and I felt like most of my answers were probably correct. Um, you don't get the exam results on the spot. So who knows when I'm gonna get them, probably within like the next seven days or so. I'll keep you guys posted and let you know whether or not I passed, hopefully I passed. Um, but I do wanna share a couple of quick notes that I have immediately. So first, the most important thing that you do when taking this exam is make sure that you take it in an incognito browser. When you take the exam, they create a new Google set of Google credentials for you. Um, and you want to make sure that you don't accidentally get logged into your regular Google account. So make sure you take this in an incognito browser. Additionally, make sure that you write down the login information that they give you. Um, so you don't get to see this throughout the test. You only see it once and then you never really have access to it again. So make sure that you write it down on a piece of paper in case you get logged out. That's a really important um, pro tip. So the top two things I'd say is incognito browser and write down your login information. Uh, in addition to that, I would say, as always with standardized testing, just make sure that you are budgeting your time wisely. Um, you know, you have 180 minutes, and while I had a lot of time left over, I don't think that's the case for everybody. I tend to be a pretty quick test taker, so make sure that you're pacing yourself well. Uh, I would say try and work through the multiple choice questions as quickly as possible so that you can really focus your energy on the application scenarios. So I had 11 different scenarios. Uh, I've heard that some people have had 12. Um, I think it just kind of depends, but it's probably the same amount of same amount of questions. Um, so spend the bulk of your time really working through the application scenarios, checking your work, making sure that you are, um, you know, not making any uh, sort of careless mistakes in terms of, um, you know, checking your sharing permissions and different things like that. Um, um, so I've written down just some pros and cons in my little notebook here that I want to go over. So first I'm gonna start with the cons of the Google Certified Educator Level 1 training and exam. So I think the most obvious con that I've sort of been emphasizing throughout this entire week is that the training is really time consuming. If you choose to do the training through Google, which I, which is what I did, I didn't use any sort of paid service, I didn't reach out to any certified trainers or anything like that, I really just relied heavily and it's pretty much exclusively on the training information provided by Google. So it was time consuming. Um, you know, some educators spend hours and hours and weeks and even months studying for this exam. I just did this over the course of the week, but I still found it to be pretty time consuming doing the Google Google training. So that's certainly a con is it'll take up a big chunk of your time. Um, another con is that if you choose to do the Google training, you pretty much have to work through everything on your own. Uh, most of it was text-based. There was some video elements, some interactive elements, but for the most part, it was very text heavy. Um, so the training, you know, because because the training I did with Google was self-guided, uh, it felt very much like me reading things on a computer uh, for the entire week. Uh, so if you're somebody who feels like you need to learn from another person, I'd probably recommend you don't use Google training. Uh, but I used it because I feel like I have a pretty firm uh, grasp and understanding of the Google suite in general. And because I... Uh, you know, didn't want to pay to use some or some other sort of service. So for me, it worked out nicely, but I do understand how that could be a con for some people. So for the pros, um, 
What I think is really great about this week is that I feel like even though I've always considered myself to be a Google Suite, Google Drive expert, I feel like I now have the a deeper and a broader skill set. So that might sound a little bit confusing that I could have deeper and broader skills, but let me just explain. So I have always felt like I knew the Google tools very well, like I just said, but now I feel like I have a deeper understanding of all of the tools. So my, my skill set is broader in the sense that I know more about all of the different tools that exist. So for example, I had never used Google tasks really before at all, Google groups before at all, but now I have, um, you know, I have that knowledge in addition to having a more in-depth knowledge of the tools that I already use regularly and already knew about. So a deeper and a broader skill set. Additionally, and I think that this is probably the best takeaway, is that I feel like I'm really able to leverage these tools now to the best of their ability. Um, so Google is an incredible company. They are obviously sort of the, the biggest tech giant really that exists. And their tools are incredible. But as an educator, you don't necessarily need to know all of the different functions of the tools to get by day to day as a teacher. But now I feel like I know the tools so well that I'm actually able to leverage them to their best ability. Um, so what I loved about this training program is that it really focused on how, it really focuses first on learning outcomes. So instead of you know, deciding what tool you need to use first, instead it really emphasizes the importance of picking and deciding on your learning outcome. And then from there, you can decide which tool best fits that learning outcome. So now because I have a better understanding of what of the affordances of all the different tools, when I choose to implement something in my classroom and I have some sort of learning goal or outcome, I know which, I have a better understanding of how I can leverage a specific tool to meet that need. Uh, so I think that that is probably the biggest pro from this entire experience. And then lastly, another pro is just, this is, you know, it's practical. Uh, something that I've been thinking a lot about this summer as I try and you know, to do more professional development is that sometimes PD is just, it's not practical. Uh, you know, the sit and get model of professional development where a lecturer or an expert in a specific field, you know, talks at teachers. Sometimes I leave those, uh, you know, conferences or talks or webinars feeling like, okay, that's great, but I don't know how I can actually implement this in my classroom with my students. But what's great about becoming a Google Certified Educator is that you actually have practical and applicable skills and takeaways from this experience. Those are pretty much the pros, I think, and the cons of doing the Google Certified Educator training and exam. Uh, the exam, and you know, it all took me a long time, but I feel like once I get my test results back, hopefully I'll pass and I will you know, be a Google Certified Educator, which is a pretty cool thing for me to add to my resume. Uh, and to just have, you know, uh, some experience. So yeah, I'll let you guys know if I pass the exam. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about how to become a Google Certified Educator in my review of my experience doing the program this week. I am so happy to say that I passed the exam and I will see you all back here next week where I go over how to become a Google Certified Educator Level 2. Bye, friends.